Hello, I'm Tom Loughton. Welcome to another of Nimba Creations how-to videos. I will be applying one of our zombie brow prosthetics in conjunction with our exposed teeth appliance to create an undead character. This makeup was applied at the High X Comic Convention in Inverness, Scotland. This time, I will color the appliance with an acrylic-based makeup palette, but any grease paint or cream makeup colors will work just as well. This is a large appliance covering most of the face, so our prosthetic adhesive will provide a strong and flexible bond. I apply the adhesive to both the performer's skin and the inside of the appliance. I fit the appliance while the adhesive is still wet. This allows me to adjust the position if necessary. Be sure to press the appliance firmly into place. Start application at the center of the face and work outwards. Be very careful when applying adhesive around the eyes. You don't want to get adhesive in the eye and even the applicator needs to be handled with care. The performer's eye should be fully shut and relaxed under the false eye. The appliance will hold their eyes shut provided you take your time to fit it correctly. Check with them often and make sure they are not in any discomfort. Make sure the appliance has plenty of adhesive and is well bonded around the edges, especially where it will move and stretch a lot. I use our gelatin blender to dissolve the edges of the appliance into the skin. Even though this is a zombie, it's good practice to be sure everything is as seamless as possible. Our exposed teeth appliance is now offered up. It allows the performer's mouth to move quite freely. Once again, our prosthetic adhesive is generously applied. You need a strong and thorough bond around the mouth. As always, I like to tidy the edges with gelatin blender. Now that the appliance is adhered and blended, it's time to color up. For this application, I used an acrylic makeup system that is activated by isopropyl alcohol. Any theatrical grease paint or cream makeup will also work just fine. I used a cut down one and a half inch paintbrush to flick the liquid makeup onto the appliance and skin. This technique gives a nice mottled pattern to the color and is similar in approach to airbrushing. I also use the brush to stipple on thicker applications of the color in a more traditional manner. I use a variety of contrasting colors and tones flicked onto the base color to add some interesting color patterns and textures. You could also use artist's acrylic paint for this over a powdered grease paint base color. I now use a darkened version of the base color to emphasize the shadows, textures, and sunken areas of the prosthetic. A finer brush is employed to stipple on pigmentation spots and to add a subtle veining pattern that helps make the skin look thin and translucent. I like to start with a very low contrast shadow color first and slowly build up the darkness to keep things as subtle as I feel is right. Don't be too heavy handed with the first pass of shadow color. Take your time. I use the same color to extend the look and feel of the makeup design onto the surrounding skin.
Take your time in adding the finer points of shadow and color tone. The devil is in the details. Next, I add a yellowy-green highlight to the raised areas and edges of the tattered skin around the mouth. It is also used to highlight the bone structure of the brow and the cheekbones. Finally, a warm ruddy tone is used sparingly to give the skin its last bit of life and color. To finish up, a bit of hair gel and a small amount of fake blood completes the makeup. We hope you have fun mixing and matching Nimba Creations appliances to create your own undead makeup applications, and keep checking back to see what new horrors are available for you to use.